Three stocks to buy in 2020. I can still do this video, right? I mean, it's not too late. I know everybody did these videos in December, but it's January, a much worse month. But let's get into it. And these stocks are coming straight from the macro op stock picking contest, which we did with our collective members. And the current stocks I'm gonna show you are Alex's picks, because that's mostly what this channel is, just telling you what Alex is doing. <laughs> so I don't mind, he's, he's a smart guy. Now there is some criteria that you use to pick these stocks. So first off, he wanted to pick stocks with crazy asymmetry. And by crazy asymmetry, he means there's very little downside and huge upside. If you put it in Buffett terms, you have a large margin of safety because these stocks shouldn't fall any farther than they've already fallen, as you'll see. So these stocks should have the potential to at least double, if not 3X or more within 12 months time. So to find these undiscovered stocks, he had to find stocks that were totally and utterly hated or completely and absolutely forgotten, dismissed and disregarded. A lot of words. Preferably, they would have a low float. And a low float is important because there's just less shares. So with less shares, that means it takes less buying pressure to shoot the thing up, right? You only need so many investors to start buying those shares and you know, supply and demand with less shares, more demand, price is gonna go up. And he wanted a reasonable catalyst for positive change on the near horizon. So if we're looking at beaten down stocks, well, unless something changes, then they're gonna stay beaten down, right? That's why you need that positive catalyst. And if they had a really large technical base from which to launch from, even better. And you'll see with all these stock picks, Alex does some deep fundamental research, but he always starts with the price action because it's the most important part, the technicals. And lucky for you, we actually have our price action masterclass open right now. And this is where we teach you basically everything you're about to see Alex do in his analysis. And you'll see it's not just random chart patterns. It's way more in depth than that so you really learn how to use price action properly anyway there's a link to this down below in the description and comments definitely check it out because it's only open until sunday and there's a 60 day money back guarantee so you could check it out with zero risk at all might as well now let's get into the first stock Le Jeu holdings ticker symbol Le Jeu. and i know it might sound french but it's not because it's chinese and i would use my chinese accent but that's racist which sucks for me because i spent years practicing it as a kid and now i can't even use it but no one cares about the french so it's fine if I say it like the way I'm saying it. But anyway, Leju Holdings is a US listed Chinese ADR and it calls itself the leading online to offline real estate services provider in China. So this thing is a Chinese real estate play. Ugh. And Alex admits it up here as he says, if you ask someone what the riskiest area in the global market is, they're gonna say the Chinese property market. Legendary short seller Jimmy, he calls it the most important asset in the world and not because it's a great value. He did an interview with Business Insider a while ago. And this is a pretty popular thesis of his. He said that real estate represents nearly half of Chinese investment and nearly half of China's GDP is investment itself. So Chinese GDP is 12 trillion. Global GDP is a little over 80 trillion. So this one market with just real estate counts for three to 4% of global GDP, depending on how you cut it. So it's a huge, huge deal. And the reason why it's dangerous is because everyone knows it's super overinflated. And that's the whole CCP thing where they just pump nonstop money into their growth and then you have all these ghost cities and you have sky high valuations for all their real estate but no one's living there it's just all artificially inflated like on steroids though like nothing anyone has ever seen before it's a chinese paper house that everyone's been waiting to see crumble for decades now but it's fun watching them keep it going so alex thinks this company even though it's chinese real estate could easily 5x or more if it doesn't end up being a total fraud because you know most of these companies in china with their reporting and it's it's all bs you actually don't know what's going on. But you know, we'll, we'll see with this one. So this stock has spent most of its time in a perpetual downtrend since it listed in 2014, after its initial high of 18 bucks a share. At one point, it was down over 94% from its all-time highs. But you can see here for the last three years, it's been forming this huge, huge base. And now it's just starting to break out. So that's a great technical signal. And you'll learn about the length of a base and how it affects, you know, the actual signal of price action in that course I was talking about, that masterclass. So Leju is basically a Chinese Zillow. They've even partnered together, actually. And the company has a market cap of only 330 million. It has a small float, which is, again, what we were talking about. That's what we're looking for, right? So prices can shoot up high. Holds hardly any debt and carries half of its market cap in cash. That's always good to see. It's expected to do 670 million in revenue this year, which makes for top line growth of 45%, nearly doubling last year's growth rate of 27%. That's beautiful. That's exactly what you want to see. And it has positive earnings growth at over 40%. And it's trading for half-time sales. So the CEO, 
and I don't know the French pronunciation of this name, so I'll just say CEO, says that the slowdown in the Chinese property market over the last two years has actually been beneficial to their business. Because now people aren't gonna hold on to their units looking for price appreciation, cause you know, things have turned. So now they're being forced to move that inventory, which is great for a business like this Chinese Zillow. That's what they do, help you move these properties. So Alex thinks the stock has smooth sailing until $3.50, where it'll hit some technical resistance. But then it probably punches through there and goes to $5 plus. Next stock is Centris Energy Corp, L-E-U, like Leju without the J. So they are a US-based supplier of nuclear fuel and services to the nuclear power industry, both US and internationally. Company only has a 62 million market cap, tiny, and only 9 million shares outstanding with just 4.5 million floated because they have such high insider ownership. Wow. Management expects to finish out the year 2019 with revenues in the range of 205 to 230 million. So if you take the middle of that, that is low double digit growth year over year. And the market's first year of positive top line growth in seven years. So this is a real dog. The stock is down over 99% from its all time highs back in May, 2007. Terrible. But now it's made almost a six year long base, which is finally trying to break out of with some large volume. So again, it's that technical signal. That's what you gotta look for first. Management expects to be profitable this year. And they just put in their first profitable quarter in a long time. They also lowered their long term debt more than 70%. That's always a good sign. So LEU recently signed a contract with the Department of Energy to demonstrate the production of high assay. I'm stupid. I can't pronounce things. Low enriched uranium. So if this is successful, it could mark the first ever commercial production of this advanced nuclear fuel, which one day could be used in advanced next gen nuclear reactors. So the chief executive at LEU, Dan, he was actually the deputy of the Department of Energy from 09 to 14. So he's in good with all those guys. He can probably get this deal done. And Alex is really bullish on uranium because governments are starting to go mad for green energy. And really there's no way to lower our carbon footprint without nuclear energy. But you know the story there, right? It's been beat down for so long. I mean, did you see the HBO's Chernobyl? Terrible. And then Japan didn't help. I don't know if you saw uh, that Netflix documentary on Bill Gates, because he's working on nuclear energy too. And all his big plans got screwed up because of the Japan mess. So like uranium and nuclear, it is the way forward, but everyone's super against it because of how dangerous it is. But like Bill Gates said in that documentary, with all these accidents, we were using reactors from the 70s. And the research didn't progress much because everyone hated nuclear just because of the accidents. So this tie needs to change and when it does this is going to be a huge huge industry that's going to be much safer too and also not a single analyst is following this stock so it's completely under the radar which is what you want for plays like this okay now we save the best stock for last the most hated as alex calls it every perma bear's favorite whipping boy i don't know how you become a whipping boy is that a task rabbit job that'd be pretty funny if you were so post-capitalism that we could hire gig workers just to whip them funny and sad but yes the number one whipping boy is deutsche bank hotly debated hotly hated. They keep finding themselves at the bottom of every money laundering and trading scandal in town. And they've just been trashed since 2008. So why, Alex? Why, why would you add this to your portfolio? Of course, he has some reasons. Deutsche Bank has already fallen over 90% from its 07 highs and has passed through the five stages of investor grief and is now totally written off. As you know, everyone absolutely hates Deutsche Bank. And you're getting to the point where sentiment is overdone. Like they're overly bearish. They're pricing it too low, even though it is almost like a pile of garbage. Investors are pricing it like a flaming pile of garbage when in fact it might just be, you know, some recyclables. So the first reason is sentiment is out of hand. And the second reason is that Alex thinks from a macro standpoint, Europe's crazy negative interest rate policies are going to go away. He thinks we're going to see rate conversions between the US and European countries, meaning the US rates will hold steady at the lower limit while the developing market rates and European rates converge higher. So if that happens, that's going to really help European banks and we'll explain why. So Alex thinks that fiscal policy over monetary policy is going to come to the EU in the near future. So it should boost domestic growth and also raise rates and steepen the curve, which is good for a bank's net interest margin. So what's net interest margin? Well, I'm going to explain it to you because I see AK right here, wrote an article about it back in 2016 years ago when I was writing blog posts. So here's how NIM net interest rate margin works. So banks take money from depositors, right? You could put your money in a bank and the bank will pay you a low rate of interest and return. These deposits that you make are actually liabilities on the bank's balance sheet because they're paying you for it. And those liabilities need to be matched with assets. 
accounting. So these assets vary from higher yielding loans, which as you know, you can borrow money from a bank too, and you end up paying them interest. And then also you got your mortgage backed securities, treasury bills, you know, all that stuff. But let's just focus on borrowing versus lending for the bank. So the way the banks make money is on the spread between what they pay the people who deposit money. So you and me, if we put our money in the bank, they pay us out for that, but they make money on the spread because the money they're loaning out, they charge an even higher price for that. So that difference between what they charge and what they pay you is called a net interest margin. So because they're charging you more to borrow money and then they pay you less when you deposit money, this difference right here is their profit. So when interest rates go up, that actually helps this margin expand. So here's why. Now you would think a rate hike would increase both the yield on a bank's assets and the interest they have to pay. Because if interest rates are higher, well then they have to pay people more when they deposit money, right? So you would think that the margin stays the same, but it doesn't, it actually increases. Because normally there's a substantial lag between the two. So so banks continue to keep paying you low, low rates for your deposits for an extended period of time. But what they're lending out, they increase the prices on that right away. So that's why there's higher net interest margin. So long story short, if European countries raise their interest rates, banks are really gonna benefit. They're finally gonna make money again. So Deutsche Bank's stock just broke out of a six month wedge and has clear skies until $15. So there you have it, your three stocks for 2020. And Alex listed out his parameters right here. Size, entry, risk point, target, and guess what? the way he sets all these things is mostly through technical analysis. By understanding price action, you could really improve your trade management and it influences everything in trade management, including your position size, your entry, your exit targets. That's all done with price action. And like I always say, management, trade management, that's 90% of the game. Picking a good stock is only 10%. So if you want to be good at trade management and you want to make good money, then you really got to understand price action. And again, that's why we have this course. This is everything we've learned over the years is given to you in a six and a half hour course, basically like a PhD education. This is all you need to know, whether you're a beginner or advanced, you're gonna learn everything that you need. And say if you didn't, well, there's a 60 day money back guarantee. So if you take it and don't like it, then we'll just give you your money back. So really there's no risk to check it out. You can only benefit from this. And it's a new year, right? That's why we're doing our three stocks. So you might as well start it off right and make sure you learn this stuff now so you can use it all year, have a great year. There's a link down below in the description and comments where you could check this out, learn and more and do it now because it closes Sunday. And if you like this video, smash that like button, comment down below with any questions or what you want to see next. We're making a ton of videos and then make sure you subscribe so that you see those videos that you request and then hit the bell for the email notification, all that good stuff. And I will see you in the next video. Stay foul out there. Bye.